I bring my outside experience to bear on the issues that are being debated in the House of Lords. I've had experience and particular interest in the BBC, of which I was once a governor, in regulating human fertilization and embryology research, in higher education and in family law. Twice in the last 10 years, the House of Lords has helped the UK become leaders in the world of embryology research and stem cell research, which will, I am confident, one day lead to major life-saving developments in that area. Rather bravely and in the face of some opposition, the House of Lords extended the work that British embryologists are allowed to do to enable them to carry out stem cell research, indeed blue skies research, most recently in the Act of 2008, the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act. I think they're probably not sufficiently aware of it, but the House of Lords is a fearless body, precisely because we're not elected we're appointed, we can afford to say and do things that might sometimes frighten MPs who are worried about their accountability and the popularity with the electorate. So we stand up for things like human rights, like research and embryology, like stopping um, sometimes misguided changes in family law without fear or favour. The debates are of an excellent quality, they're never too long, and there is a wealth of expertise in the House. Moreover, the House contains more black and ethnic minority people, more women and more disabled than you get in the House of Commons, and that makes it a truly rich and diverse body. I think we probably don't publicise ourselves as much as we might. I personally do some of the outreach work for the House of Lords, which involves going round to schools and talking to teenagers about the work of the House of Lords. Um, I think the MPs simply make more noise and the newspapers concentrate on them more. But actually, what the House of Lords is doing is well worth examining. Well, I spent much of my life teaching law and trying to understand the British Constitution. So for me, going into the house and looking at the walls and the pictures soaked in hundreds of years of British history, looking at Westminster Hall, which has been there for nearly a thousand years and has been the scene of some of the greatest moments in British history, just standing there and absorbing it and having it reminds me of how fortunate I am and how much I must really work to contribute to play my tiny part in this immense history represented by that splendid building.